Congresswoman Ilhan Omar is picking another fight, this time over sports. In a new letter to USA Powerlifting, Omar attacks the organization because it opposes having a biological male compete against women in a lifting competition. Omar claims ludicrously that biological males have no advantage over women. That's in defiance of about a million years or so of evidence to the contrary. It doesn't matter, though. Omar's letter is just the latest case of powerful people on the left bullying anyone they can't control. You saw the same thing with the gay marriage debate. Any Christian-owned bakery that doesn't want to bake a gay wedding cake risks fines, lawsuit, and ruin. Okay, so those are the new rules. So what about Muslim-owned bakeries? Do the rules apply there, too? Stephen Carter asked that question a while back, and he found pretty much what you'd expect. Lots of Muslim-owned bakeries will not bake gay wedding cakes. And we're not complaining about that. Private business owners shouldn't be forced to engage in speech they find immoral. But the left doesn't agree. So where's the letter from Congresswoman Omar demanding that Muslim bakeries who won't bake these cakes be shut down? We're still looking for that letter. And what about Omar's own mosque, by the way? Does it perform gay marriages? And if it doesn't, has she complained about that? Has she denounced them? We called our office today to find out. They haven't replied yet. We suspect we'll be waiting a while for an answer, but we're always open to one. Congressman Omar is starting a lot of fights recently for a newcomer. She's in the center of many news stories. Today on Capitol Hill, she berated the new envoy to Venezuela, Elliot Abrams, accusing him of being a liar and attacking him over the Iran-Contra affair that took place more than 30 years ago. Here's part of it. More than 800 civilians, including children as young as two years old, were brutally murdered by U.S. trained troops. You later said that the U.S. policy in El Salvador was a fabulous achievement. Yes or no, do you think that massacre was a fabulous achievement? that happened under our watch? That is a ridiculous question, and I yes will not... Yes or no? It. No. I, I I'm will, sorry, Mr. I will take that as a yes. I am not going to respond to that kind of personal attack. Congresswoman Omar is herself, of course, a refugee to this country. She was born in Mogadishu. She spent most of her time, at least her political life, attacking this country as immoral. Uh, she also supports a number of policy ideas like the Green New Deal, that don't make mathematical sense. She's also for abolishing ICE. So there are things you could criticize about the Congresswoman, but you're not allowed to criticize her. A new piece in Politico argued that. Now, why? Well, not because what she says is factually true, but because, of course, of her identity. Quote, the GOP strategy risks a backlash. A party that has problems with women and minorities continues to focus its attacks on women of color. End quote. Not on women it disagrees with, but on women of color. Their color is the most important part to the people at Politico. MSNBC agreed with this, of course. In a segment yesterday, one of its guests said that it was, quote, not a good look for conservatives to attack Congresswoman Omar because she's a woman. Her actual views are irrelevant. It's about her identity. Michelle Malkin is a syndicated columnist and author, and she joins us tonight. Michelle, thanks very much for coming on. I, I think you, a lot of things about this, but one of them is that the rest of us are deprived an interesting debate over the issues when that debate is shut down on the basis of immutable characteristics. You know, you're this color, the person you're talking about is that color, no more conversation. We don't even get to hear what the issues are. Yeah, it is cheating the American public of a true, honest, and vigorous debate on very important policy matters. And uh, I also feel a little bit left out, Tucker, because this immunity shield is only provided to certain privileged women of color who <laughs> claim a certain ideology. Over the last 25 centuries, I've never had this privilege. Who's handing oh. out the Wonder Woman bracelets that can deflect all bullets of criticism? Because I've never gotten one. And um, it's that double <laughs> standard of, of the attacks that uh, women and people of color who are conservative or limited government or libertarian never enjoy that Elon Omar has. And uh, it's not just the left that claims this privilege for uh, these radical racist, hateful women like Ilan Omar. Unfortunately, you've got enablers in the Beltway who call them conservatives, like uh, Jennifer Rubin at the Washington Post. 
uh, carrying water for these people. And you and you look at the, the hearing today that you showed a, a little clip of. What was that? It was coordinated kabuki theater. Code Pink has, has achieved its dream of having essentially an ideological intern now sitting on the other side of the aisle carrying water for them. <laughs> Amazing. What I find so striking, though, <laughs> is that if you're making the argument that People should be uh, people of one color should be allowed to say one thing, and people of another color can't say that thing because of their color. That's by definition a racist argument. You are a racist if you are making that argument. Again, by definition, and yet it's the same people who make that argument who are always denouncing everyone else as racists. Yeah. What do you make yeah. of that? It well, you know, I've diagnosed this at least online as what I call Silicon Valley Sharia, because the perfect example, of course, is that Ilan Omar is allowed to tweet. <laughs> these heinous, vile things, while a Jewish woman who was the first to criticize her before she was elected, when people should have been listening, Laura Loomer, is banned from Twitter. Uh, and and it, this is insanity when you have Louis Farrakhan, I guess a man of color who's allowed to call Jews termites on Twitter, he's still on Twitter, and Elon Omar is still on Twitter, and the brave critics of jihad and this narrowing of what's allowed in public debate are increasingly being deplatformed. And it is because these people on the yeah. left smell fear, Tucker Carlson, that That's they've right. been able to get away with it. Well, I totally agree with that. And it's because the cowardice of a lot of people in Washington who should be defending their people and the right to speak honestly in public have run away and caved. I agree with that yes. completely, Michelle Malkin. Thank you for saying that. Michelle Malkin, you as bet. always.